On Saturday, another one of our communities was terrorized by gun violence. Barbara was love. Right. Always, always love. had a smile. Always, always had a uh, love of my life. A loss of innocence. Really, uh, this is a terrible moment in this community. We face violence like any other community does, but nothing on this scale. We couldn't believe it, no. We can't, we still can't believe it. There is no hard and fast rule on how to deal with it because this isn't normal. A community united against violence trying to make sense of a tragedy. A vigil is underway right now in downtown Kalamazoo to remember lives lost, to pray for survivors, and to begin the long process of healing. Hello, and thanks for joining us for our one-hour special report. We are Kalamazoo. I'm Andy Dominiani. And I'm Kate Tillotson. Right now, people here in West Michigan and all around the world are shaken by what appear to be random acts of violence by one man on a rampage. These are the faces of the lives lost. 53-year-old Richard Smith and his 17-year-old son Tyler, a senior at Matawan High School, popular and well-liked by his classmates. 74-year-old Dorothy Judy Brown from Battle Creek, known to friends and family as Judy. Well, her son says she loved her family, her cats, and baking cookies. 68-year-old Barbara Hawthorne, part of a group of friends who met while working at Kellogg. She loved to play cards, and her friends say... She was the best euchre player in the group. 60-year-old Mary Jo Nye of Battle Creek and her sister-in-law, 62-year-old Mary Lou Nye of Baroda, out to eat with friends after watching a performance at Miller Auditorium. Now, this nightmare played out over the course of six hours on Saturday night. And during that time period, people across the city were paralyzed by fear, not sure where the gunman might strike next. Over the course of the next hour, we'll be bringing you live team coverage all angles in the aftermath of this killing spree will hear from loved ones, from community leaders, law enforcement, and those who knew the suspected mass murderer. It's been one week since the deadly shooting spree across Kalamazoo County. Tonight, we remember all eight victims in this senseless act of violence outside of a town home, at a car dealership, and a restaurant parking lot. Father and son Richard and Tyler Smith, Mary L. Nye, and her sister-in-law, Mary Jo Nye, Barbara Hawthorne and Judy Brown, along with the survivors, Tiana Carruthers and 14-year-old Abigail Koff. Just hours after friends and family celebrated the life of Richard and Tyler Smith, friends gathered at the Sealy Kia dealership in Kalamazoo. That's where Smith and his son were fatally shot one week ago tonight. News Channel 3's Amy Hybels is there right now. Amy. It's hard to believe, Britt, that it was just a week ago tonight that uh, both were looking out, we're out here in the parking lot looking at a pickup truck together when all of this happened. Now, what was expected to have been a very somber event this evening really turned into a celebration of their lives. Family and friends released bright red and blue balloons from the parking lot of the car dealership where 53 year old Rich Smith and his 17 year old son Tyler were shot and killed one week ago tonight. <laughs> the crowd clapping after releasing the balloons. Cars on Stadium Drive honking in approval. And then the surprise. Fireworks lit up the evening sky as the crowd looked on. Just hours after celebrating the life of Rich and Tyler Smith at a funeral service. Pastor Brian Stone, who spoke at a community-wide prayer service this evening right down the road, says milestones like this serve an important purpose. We find comfort in knowing that I'm not alone. I don't grieve alone, and, and here's people I don't even know who are grieving with me, and there's something healing that takes place then. Rich's sister-in-law, who spoke at the funeral this afternoon, described her brother-in-law as the rock of the family who gave the best bear hugs. Tyler's girlfriend also spoke, describing Tyler as someone who taught her to live every day like it was her last. Reporting live in Kalamazoo, Amy Hybels, News Channel 3. Right now we are learning that the suspected gunman, Jason Dalton, was working as an Uber driver before, during, and after he allegedly shot eight people across Kalamazoo County. 
A Kalamazoo man who was an Uber passenger of Dalton's before the shooting started is speaking out saying he warned authorities. That man is only speaking to News Channel 3's Walter Smith Randolph. The passenger is shaken but grateful. He tells me the minute he got into the car, he knew something was wrong. Matt Mellon tells me Dalton introduced himself as Mimi and had his dog in the back of his car. The next thing he knew, Dalton was driving 80 miles an hour down West Main, sideswiping cars. Now, alarm bell should have been going off in my head. And I... Matt Mellon is counting his lucky stars. Pretty scary ordeal, especially to be so closely involved with it. But... I'm just happy I'm safe. And that. Mellon was a passenger at alleged gunman Jason Dalton's car while he was working as an Uber driver before allegedly opening fire on eight people across Kalamazoo County. Mellon says Dalton was acting strange. He, he introduced himself as a different name uh, than what Jason was on that comes up for Uber. Sitting in the back of that Chevy Equinox was Dalton's dog. We got maybe a mile from my house. He got a telephone call. And after that telephone call, he started driving really erratically. Um, we were running stop signs. Dalton allegedly hitting 80 miles an hour down West Main Avenue while sideswiping cars. We were kind of driving through medians, driving through the lawn, speeding along. And then finally, once he came to a stop, I jumped out of the car and ran away. And Mellon says that's when he called police. He wouldn't stop. He just kind of kept looking at me like, well, don't you want to get a ride to your friend's house? And I was like, well, yeah, but I want to get there alive, you know. Once he got to his friend's house, he told his fiance what happened. She posted this warning so others wouldn't be harmed. We posted the, the picture on Facebook just so our friends wouldn't get in a car with him if they happened to have to take an Uber that night. Mellon says he jumped out of Dalton's car around 4.30 Saturday afternoon. Police believe Dalton opened fire at the Meadows townhomes around 6 o'clock before allegedly shooting seven more people between 10 o'clock and 10.30. I'm upset because uh, I tried contacting Uber afterwards after I talked to the police saying that we needed to get this guy off the road. Another News Channel 3 viewer posting this Uber notification saying she was scheduled for a pickup by Dalton at 11.19. By that time, six people already gunned down. And you said through this whole time he was just very calm. Yeah, yeah, surprisingly calm because I was freaking out. Police later apprehended Dalton in downtown Kalamazoo around 12.30. Mellon says there needs to be a faster response when Uber drivers show erratic behavior. In the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, News Channel 3. And our team coverage continues now as we hear for the first time from witnesses working to help the shooting victims. And we see the moments leading up to Jason Dalton's arrest. News Channel 3's Lauren Springer is live in studio now after going through those 911 calls. Lauren. Andy, these calls, everything you'd imagine they'd be heartbreaking, emotional, urgent. But the arrest, just the opposite as Dalton is pulled over and taken into custody peacefully. The night of February 20th, 911 calls from across the county flooding Kalamazoo Central Dispatch. I'm just a concerned neighbor that's uh, been listening to gunfire for the last three hours. In the end, police say each call tied back to this man, Jason Dalton. Things escalating quickly. 911. We need, we need someone here. Okay. Please, we need. Are you over here in Meadows? Panic neighbors calling for help outside the Meadows townhomes where 25 year old Tiana Carruthers was gunned down trying to protect a group of children. Where is the person that shot her? I don't know. The, the, the car sped off. Please, please don't move. No. Please don't move. They coming, okay? Please don't move. We got the kids. Dalton then leaving the town homes, running a red light and sideswiping another car. He hit me pretty good. He was going like 50 miles an hour. Police say Dalton then changed cars and moved here to the Cracker Barrel. Are, are they breathing? Um, one is not. That's where he's accused of killing four women in the parking lot and seriously injuring a 14-year-old. What's the vehicle yeah. that sh that fired the gun? Thank you. It's a blue HHR, dark blue, and it drove off right as we pulled up. It was just a few hours later. East on or west on or north? After midnight on Sunday, a quiet ending. Get your hands up where we can see them. Here you can see Dalton pulled over by a Kalamazoo County deputy. We got one in custody, one weapon off of him. Dalton searched, a single gun taken by police, and then he's walked an officer in each arm to the back of a patrol car. 
city has one in custody, one weapon off of them. And there was, of course, another incident that killed a father and son at the Sealy Kia on Stadium Drive. We have not received that video. Tonight at 6, we'll have much more on Dalton's arrest and hear from the deputy that pulled him over and ultimately arrested him. Live in studio tonight, Lauren Springer, News. Well, Jason Dalton's motives are still unknown, but phone calls and leads are trickling into our newsroom from those who know and have even worked with Dalton before. And News Channel 3's investigative reporter Cody Combs is looking into many of those leads from people telling their stories about the man accused of killing six people. He's joining us live in our newsroom now tonight. Cody. I looked through criminal and court records and could not find any prior problems Dalton had with the law. But we're also looking into several tips from those who say Dalton methodically changed into a different person. Prior to being an Uber driver, Dalton worked as a claims representative for quite a few companies. State Farm confirms he worked in Kalamazoo until 2001, but a former colleague tells News Channel 3 he left on bad terms and then worked at Progressive until 2011, only to part ways with that company, again, not on good terms. Progressive did not say why or how Dalton left, but a former co-worker says Dalton obsessed over it, never letting it go. Fast forward to 2016, Dalton's neighbors say he slowly but surely became paranoid, especially over alleged thefts. It wasn't uncommon, they say, to hear gunshots. I guess he's he's had some break-ins in his garage over the past few years. This is uh, from what I've heard, and you know everybody just thought maybe he was out shooting his gun to scare him away or something. And on the night, investigators say he went on his killing spree. Neighbors insist they heard gunshots again. I had just gotten that, just gone out to the hot tub, and I was sitting out there when when uh, shots were fired, and I I thought, well, maybe it was Jason. Dalton has a wife and two children. There were concerns for the safety of the family, but Kalamazoo County Sheriff says they are safe. In the newsroom, I'm Cody Combs. News. Thank you, mommy. I love you, and you're my. She survived a horrific night, and tonight for the first time, we're hearing from the daughter of Tiana Carruthers. Her mom shielded her from a gunman on a rampage in Kalamazoo County. Her message to her mom was part of a night of hope. Hundreds packing Galilee Baptist Church in Kalamazoo tonight to heal and to support Tiana Carruthers and the other victims of the shooting spree with a benefit concert. News Channel 3's Christine Van Timmeren was at the concert where the crowd got to hear from Tiana herself. Well, tonight's benefit concert lasted more than three hours here at the Galilee Baptist Church. The sanctuary was full to capacity. They even had to create an overflow area with screens so more people could watch that concert. And tonight, a video message from Tiana thanking everyone for all of their support. Faith, love, and support on full display Friday night at Galilee Baptist Church. The community coming together to support the victims of the Kalamazoo shooting. Hi, Galilee. How is everyone? I'm doing well. I'm on the road to recovery, and I'm so thankful for everyone. I love you all. And for the first time, we heard from Tiana Carruthers, the Kalamazoo mother shot four times while protecting her children and others. And I never expected this much love, but the love is true and the love is real and it's there. And I just want to say thank you to Galilee Church. News Channel 3 talked exclusively with Tiana's mother, Iona, earlier this week. Everybody has come as one and, you know, it, it amazes me that everybody has come together, especially Kalamazoo. Tiana was present by video message while her family sat in the front row of the church. Proud of her mother's courage, Tiana's daughter stood up with a message of her own. Thank you, Mommy. I love you, and you're my big hero. Everyone in the pews here for them, here to help us all heal. Well, we just hope that everyone leaves with a sense of peace in their heart that we're a city that's gonna to pull together. Church leaders say they feel blessed to host such an event. Through the music, through prayer, and through celebration, money was raised and hearts were made strong once again. And I just wanna say thank you so much. Have a blessed day. Enjoy, please have fun for me. <laughs>